I know what you're thinking. Traveling again during a pandemic. Are you mad? And the truth is, the vaccination rollout has been very successful and a lot of the countries are beginning to open up again. And Iceland's always been easier to get to amongst a lot of the travel destinations. It's been put on our, our green list. During the summer, people want to go to hot countries. People want to go on their summer holidays to like Spain and France and Portugal and Italy and all those kind of nice places. Iceland is still quite up and coming as a tourist destination. So it's not that sought after amongst most people, especially from Britain. We always want to go to the hot countries, you know? Personally, I love a hot country, but I also love an adventure. In case you didn't know, Iceland currently has a volcano that's been erupting since the end of March. I don't know about you guys, but for me, seeing a volcano erupting is so high on my bucket list. Other countries that have regular volcanic activity are also like in Asia or the volcanoes themselves are too dangerous to see because of the big ash clouds. This one in Iceland is so unique. It's so close to the airport. It's so close to my house in the sense of just a few hours flight. It's not like millions of miles away. There's no ash. The, it's just so easy. It's just like the, the perfect volcano. Fast forward a little bit. I was supposed to be traveling to Iceland in April, which would have meant seeing the volcano in its prime. But due to travel restrictions, we were unable to go and visit it. So I kind of missed out on that. And my next Iceland trip was scheduled for next April. So a year later, there's no guarantee that a volcano is still going to exist. It might have stopped erupting. It might still stop erupting. We just don't know. So we booked five days in Iceland this August 2021. But just to complicate things just a little bit more, we do have a few coronavirus tests to take. So first off, we have the fit to fly one, which means that we are allowed to travel in the first place, which is this here. About two or three days before traveling to Iceland, I will get this swabbed, sent off to the lab and get my results back so I can fly. While we're in Iceland, we then have to get another test done in the center, which happens to be just down the road from where we're staying. So it's not much of a pain in the ass to go and see. That test will enable us to fly back to the UK. <laughs> and then when we get back to the UK, within two days of arrival, we've then got to take this test, which is called day two testing, which is also a PCR test. And hopefully all three tests will show as negative. And yeah, very, very much looking forward to going again. So it's Monday, 16th of August. We are just three days away from our trip to Iceland. And today means we have to do the fit to fly test to make sure that we are negative. And then we get a certificate to say that we can fly. So I'm gonna probably have to gag on all this stuff now um, and then send it off in the mail. big these things are. This is going to be a very uncomfortable 30 seconds, so apologies for what you better see and hear. Oh god, this is horrible. Oh, the thing you do for flying. <laughs> So the test's all done now, I've boxed it, I've packed it, and I'm about to ship the damn thing. So hopefully get the result back pretty quickly. It's tracked 24 hours, so I should get the results back on Wednesday, and we fly on Thursday. So that's one less thing to have to worry about, unless of course the result comes back positive, but can't see why it should. I have voluntarily self-isolated the last 10 days. So, if I'm positive, then it's beyond me, really. So, hopefully I'll come back negative and, um, yeah, the trip's going to take place. I'm so excited. With just a day to go until travel, we got together online to make sure that we had what we needed, go over the plans, and do any last-minute shopping. 
So here we are, morning of the 19th of August. Travel day. I've got to make sure I get my coffee in this morning. So John, Nat and Tony are on the way here. Uh, and then we're going to load up the car and head off to Stansted. And we're off! Iceland has always been a special place to me. And it's about to get even more special. Seeing an active volcano has been on my bucket list for as long as I can remember, and knowing we were finally on our way to see one was a huge relief. In part due to its relatively predictive volcanic cycle, but also the coronavirus situation. With so many travel restrictions and lockdowns over the past 18 months, we kept our hopes up that there wouldn't be another delay. So back in, back in an airport after a year and a half almost, I think now. But Stansted, just going through the security check-in. Just want our liquids out. So we'll see you on this side in the departure lounge. As we left for the airport earlier than planned, we made excellent time, allowing us to enjoy a stress-free time at the airport, indulge in a large breakfast, and peruse the shops. So we made it into Keflavik. Nice cloudy day today. First stop, we're going to head to the store to get some food and drinks for tonight's hike to the volcano. So apart from us and the people on our plane, it kind of feels like we're the only passengers here. It's really empty, look at that, there's no one around except us. Once we arrived, we met with our car rental representative and organised the documentation. The That's make sure you get that fear on my face. <laughs> Left. Oh, squeak. Oh, that's not good. Oh, I don't know. There are brakes. I'll go around the island, but if not, I think we should go back. <laughs> I suppose, Dan, this frees you up to do all the filming. True that. Pretty much, yeah. So, we have just been to the supermarket to get some snacks for now really because we've not had any lunch or any proper lunch and we're going to head to Krisavik, which is a geothermal site, been there quite a lot as you know, <laughs> I like going there and then following that we're going to pack up our bags and head to the volcano because the activity is on the up which means tonight is going to give us a good show. So our first actual stop here, we're at Krusevik. Uh, you can see the steam vents behind me there, spewing away, beautiful heat, wonderful goodness. Yeah, it's, honestly, it's a bit colder than you think. It's not, you know, hugely different, maybe like 14 degrees. But it's the wind again, even though it's not that windy, you've got a bit of a chill just coming through you. Um, to be fair, we have kind of just come off the plane and made our way here, so we're not really properly dressed for the occasion. We have got layers in the car and stuff, but we'll just save it for later, since later we're gonna go on the volcano hike, which by the way, is starting to look very good. It's starting to become more active now, so give it a, maybe another four to six hours and it'd be great. By the way, that noise you can hear is the steam vent right behind me. What are your thoughts then? Well, the last time I come here, I said that it smelled like arse, so <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't changed. <laughs> yeah, Tally will have a better explanation. I've never seen anything like this before. Yeah. 
you know, I've been here a bunch of times, but it's like you kind of forget what it's like till you come back. Like it's the smell you get from the sulfur, the sound of the earth just bubbling away, like all the all the water and, and the, the mud and everything. The one thing that always captivates me is the colours that you get from this. It's kind of hard to describe, but you've got all that grey clay that's really like wet and sticky. <laughs> the yellow and the browns, it's all rusty and sulfuric. It's just an amazing place. So yeah, this is kind of off the beaten track. It's not, well, it's, it's, it's not necessarily a, a popular place to come, but it's still quite well known. Um, so if you do get a chance to go to Iceland, then this is obviously a really good place to visit. We're just having a bit of a photo shoot here, I think. It's kind of cool. The landscape here is just rugged and rough, and that's what we like. And just, just the landscape being as dramatic as it wants to be. You can see, like, with some of the rocks here, like the land, how it sort of ripples down. This used to be a whole, like an entire lava field. Just trying to imagine the scale of the volcano that must have just created all this.